everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for coming. And uh, so today is basically part one of hopefully a series of, of uh, two or three uh, more uh, sessions. So of, of doing single cell analysis. So um, the um, the platform we uh, these uh, be, um, what we call apps are built into is, is Vizar platform. So Vizar is a free software you can download. Uh, the link is here. By the way, the link to the slides. Uh, slides are also available, so you can later, I mean, download and get the links. Um, but uh, basically, the the whole idea behind Vizar was was to be able to uh, quickly um, turn uh, our libraries into um, these so-called apps, so that it's easy to use. Uh, and it was mainly meant to be used by biologists who who aren't as proficient in, in, in R. But um, I think even people who, who know R will find it useful because it sort of packages everything. So basically, you write the code once, and uh, you add a few basic lines of code, and it automatically generates an, an app for you. But I won't go into the details of it. Uh, there are some YouTube videos uh, that you, you have. Uh, if you are interested into building apps, there are some tutorials and YouTube videos for, for building those. But uh, today, I'm going to basically go through the first one of uh, these apps uh, we have made for single cell analysis. So it's uh, basically uh, the, the uh, 10x Genomics Cell Ranger R kit uh, library, which adds a little bit more uh, functionality over their own um, uh, interactive tool, a loop, a C loop? C loop or loop? Um, cell loop. Yeah. Cell loop, yeah. So, uh, and uh, I will show you how to sort of you can you can um, mix uh, these apps together with some of the interactive functionalities that are in VizR to hopefully get a bit more insight into your into your data. Um, so as I said, this is the first app, and uh, today I'm just going to be going through the Cell <coughs> Ranger. Uh, but um, uh, even though each app and I provide their own sort of different uh, analysis workflows and. Uh, plots and probably different uh, type of uh, uh, um, analysis for for the data. We have tried. We are trying to make all the apps to sort of follow the same uh, uh, workflow, uh, so that it's easy to sort of switch between the app. So basically, right now the workflow is you specify what's your input directory is, your input for your uh, um, single cell data. Uh, the output where the results are going to be exported into, and then the analysis steps that uh, that specific uh, R library provides, and uh, uh, and then the parameters for for those steps. So um, the uh, data that I'm basically going so this this going to be mainly an interactive demo. Uh, the slides are there for your reference later, perhaps. But uh, the data that uh, I'll be using is the PBMC 3K data. It's uh, uh, 2,700 single cells and uh, around 33,000 uh, genes, and and it can be done. It's uh, it's basically the um, typical data set uh, for sort of I would say maybe a toy data set to 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 do the single cell analysis, uh, but. Um, so you can you can download that if if later you wanted to sort of start playing around with it, or you can use your own data set. So um, as I mentioned, uh, so maybe I can I can just start right now uh, into um, so so once you download uh, uh, VizRSeq, uh, let's see if I if I can show you the um, directory where I downloaded it to I downloaded to desktop I believe yeah. Um, so once you download the Vizar Seek, based on the platform that uh, platform you have, uh, you use one of these uh, run commands. So for on uh, Mac, I'm using the OS X, and once you run it, you will uh, basically start with uh, um, basically the main interface of the Vizar. So the way Vizar basically works is that you have your apps here, and you drag and drop your apps into the workspace, I, as I will show you in a second, and you specify the parameters and run them. And the apps underneath are R code, and then the R code basically runs, generates the results, brings back the results here. And then you can sort of, 
uh, chain those results back into other apps to create a sort of a more complex workflow. Uh, so I'll start with this Cell Ranger app that uh, today we're going to go through and uh, sequencing single cell and you drag and drop and um, so here are the parameters I'm um, just uh, initially specify the data set directory so the PBMC 3k data that uh, I downloaded and extracted uh, I just specified the, the, the directory for it and open it and now it's asking me to provide the output directory uh, this is where you want the plots and the report and the results sort of to go into. For those of you who are familiar with the older version of VizRC, and previously you could only get them into the VizRC, and then if you had closed the VizRC, you would sort of lose all those that you had got, unless if you had saved them. But now we have decided sort of to save them all also into a directory in case you want to go back uh, and, and sort of see where you got, uh, got them. So I'll just specify a new, new folder for it. Uh, basically, this is where output going to be. So output cell ranger, create it, and, and open it. So you can say every time that you run the app, it, you can ask it to create a subdirectory for you. This is sort of so that it doesn't overwrite the existing results. Uh, so if, if you say that, it will basically create a subdirectory with the date and time. And these are just, just to, to sort of facilitate reproducibility. If you, if you uh, rerun, rerun the result of the different uh, app with the different parameters, you sort of keep a history of, of all, you, all you did in the past. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep that checked. So the analysis of steps that CellRanger provides um, uh, is CellRanger uh, pipeline, for those of you who may, be, may not be familiar with, already does some sort of preliminary analysis on the data. It does some clustering. And um, the R uh, library that they have is sort of to poke into that, that uh, analysis that they have done. To, to redo new clusterings and uh, to perform further analysis, the Sail Ranger app doesn't provide them. But then uh, that's why we have uh, Monocle and Surat, which uh, hopefully in the next sort of parts, uh, next few weeks, we'll go through them. So um, uh, here, uh, you would basically say, I want the, my, my cell table. And, and then, if basically, if you enable that, uh, you can say, what do you want to be extracted into your cell table? And uh, before I run this, I quickly switch uh, perhaps into the slides. Um, so so once, once the tool is run, it, uh, it exports, based on the uh, parameters that you have set, it exports several tables to that output directory. And, um, so, so one of the tables is the cells table, and if you have, uh, um, so it's uh, kind of a little bit hard to see, but basically it, it, it will create your, uh, it, it will put the barcodes for the cells and some information about the you know, total UMI count, the log normalization, and then uh, the 2D projection of, of the cells uh, using the T-SNE uh, algorithm or uh, PCA. And then there are uh, k-means results for different k-values, uh, 2, 3, 4, up to 10. As I said, this is, since Cell Ranger already, the pipeline already provides in the, the data, it's basically this is to give you further access. And then you can specify, if you want to probe into uh, individual genes, you can specify a gene list of your choice and also exports the, the, the accounts for those genes and, and with the normalization that you have chosen. So here, this is basically what I'm going to choose. I'm going to say, yeah, include all of those. And in addition, I want the counts for the genes. And then here is just a list of comma-separated genes. I don't remember any, so I'm just going to cheat and copy-paste them from the slides. Um, so this is just a list of genes, any, any sort of list of your um, housekeeping genes or any, any genes that you want to sort of further look into. Uh, you choose the normalization if you want to get the raw values or you want uh, the sum uh, over the median, uh, so sum uh, divided by the median or the log 10 of that. 
And let's just run this without the differential expression analysis. And then if I just run this, uh, it basically starts loading the cell ranger. So this is basically from now on everything is done on the R side. So if you, if you basically can even open the code for this app there, or open source, and run it in R Studio if you're familiar with. And basically it will go through this step. And when it's done, it opens up this report that it has generated, the PDF report. So uh, right now this, the PDF report basically says this is a summary of your data and it has 2,700 cells and like the uh, percentage of the valid barcodes or so on and so forth. And, and then um, this is, again, these are sort of the plots that initially um, are provided by that app, but we'll go through these a little bit further and uh, to get a little bit more value out of them. So the total number of uh, uh, UMIs per cell, so here each point is a cell, the dark places have, have more total UMI, the, and this is the log 10 normalized, obviously. The brighter uh, points uh, are the cells with the lower number of UMIs. Um, this is the k-means results, the clustering results. So when you cluster uh, two, two clusters, three clusters, four clusters, up to ten clusters. And this is, again, for just preliminary analysis. And these are uh, the uh, gene markers uh, for those genes that you had specified initially. So whatever genes you had. So it sort of shows that, okay, here is this NKG7 uh, gene uh, that like this is sort of where it's more saturated you have more uh, counts and so on and so forth so this can can sort of help to go back into uh, compare it with which cluster it is if you are looking at these so this is the base output that you get if even if even if you run this in R studio now what Vizar allows you to do is sort of to do some interactive analysis on this and um, I can start by opening the data table that was just generated. So if I open my analysis directory, uh, there's this cells uh, data table with the UMI count, the TSNE coordinates, and the principal components, k-means results, and, um, and those genes that I specified as an input. <laughs> That's strange nice. Um, so now, so now we can basically start exploring these uh, this this table further. I'll start with the scatter plot. So I drag the scatter plot up, and then the cells. And now, as an x and y coordinate, I want to use uh, similarly tsne one and tsne two. So basically, this is the same plot that you would uh, get. Uh, as an output of the uh, sort of the cell ranger R kit, but but now you have sort of more interactive um, uh, interactivity over it. So let's start coloring them with the uh, say total UMI count as we we had seen. So this is the total UMI count. You can use even the same uh, change the um, the the color map and so on and so forth to match with your other figures. Um, but uh, now let's go and uh, color them by, the, by different uh, clusterings. So I select now k-means 5. Um, you can uh, sort of toggle on, on and off certain clusters if you're interested in specific clusters. Uh, and uh, now um, you can specify the tooltip to be your barcodes. Probably not that, uh, not that, um, Important. I would say these barcodes are very um, uh, cryptic, right? It's but but if you had other information about your uh, cells, uh, uh, some 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 sometimes your tables have some phenotype data. So you can basically say, I want the tooltips to be that phenotype column, um, and and you can annotate them and so on and so forth. Um, you can. Um, aggregate your cells. Sometimes, because of overplotting, you may not totally understand if, if, if like how big each cluster is. So you can uh, aggregate them. Uh, so here it's basically you just showing mean and standard deviation around them. Uh, you can different use different aggregate uh, aggregate functions, median and quartiles, or you can say 
scale just based on the size of each cluster. So these are basically uh, your different clusters. So you see that cluster four is sort of a smaller cluster. This is just, just for the size comparison. Uh, you can also do gating, sort of filtering, uh, if you wanted to specifically get this sp uh, a specific set of cells. So you can just get those cells. And, and here you would get a list of those cells. You can export this as a different table if you just you're interested um, uh, in those specific cells. And um, so now I'm going to just show play around a little bit with the um, another app, the parallel coordinates app. So if you remember, we had those five, six genes that for which we had these uh, um, uh, the gene markers. So now if, if say we want to see uh, how they are doing in different clusters, uh, which in which cluster they are expressed more. So I'm uh, going to grab, uh, again, the data to the parallel coordinates. Initially, it's too crowded because uh, there are so many columns. So I'm just going to start with, uh, first of all, I'm going to be doing um, um, coloring them again by um, k-means uh, results, so k-means 5. And now I'm going to just disable all the columns except for those genes, uh, the gene markers. And I also don't want the barcodes. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, just looking at this, uh, this is sort of an alternative to violin plots. Uh, so still, you can, you can use the violin plots. Uh, this is sort of an, an alternative, if, if you want to sort of be able to, to compare. So just looking at this, uh, for example, we see that uh, this gene, CD79A, is mostly expressed in this cluster, cluster number five. And this gene, AKG7, is mostly uh, expressed in these two clusters, cluster green, number three, and then the blue one, number two, and so on and so forth. You can sort of go through. Um, I guess um, this makes more sense if when you are uh, looking at the specific genes of your interest. Um, uh, by the way, so if, in order to compare them fair, like, so this is uh, when we were exporting the cell ranger output. We selected the normalization to be log 10. Uh, so if, if you're interested in just the raw values for those genes, you can get the raw values. And then, then here, you get to show the raw, raw values. But these, these are right now the log 10 normalized. Um, we can also sort of, uh, we can specify the axes ranges here if we want to compare them. So I'm just going to do all of them together. So I'm just going to say for all of them go from 0 to 2. And just so that it's e sort of uh, same across dimensions. And you can change other visual uh, um, uh, properties to match, again, the figures in your paper or elsewhere. So if, if you want to have a custom color palette for your clusters uh, to match them. Actually, in fact, there's one of the uh, pa color palettes, custom ones, is the one that's used also by, um, by, the, uh, by the plots, where, which we were just looking at. The, um, if I um, bring back the result. So here, it's uh, so if you were looking at k-means 5, uh, why, why, why am I even looking here? I, I could uh, actually do it in bizarre-seek, so. But, um, oops. So it's basically these clusters. Uh, um, but probably uh, better would be if I just uh, do it side by side. Um, I have the parallel coordinates here, and then here um, I would, um, oh, I don't want the, uh, where's the right click here? There you go. Um, I'm just gonna delete this filter, because this was just arbitrary. But uh, 
if you want to compare this and that together, uh, let's uh, use the same um, uh, color palette that this was this is using. So to 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 look at both of them together. And I lo had lowered the screen resolution here, so it's a little bit hard to fit two of them. But usually, on on um, and hopefully on your screen, you will have a little bit more space. So um, next is um, the next uh, set of uh, analysis that, uh, so so far, is there any questions? Maybe I should stop and if, if there are any questions before I move on. So in this case, the gene is just a gene in the cell. Yeah, so, so that was sort of our cells table. So each point, basically our units are cells. And uh, for the next analysis, you, our units would be genes. So if you want to have our genes as our basically points, it would be the one that I, I will right now go through. But the one that we had uh, at the time is, is just basically we had cells as our rows of the table and sort of properties about those cells. So for each cell, you can say what's the total UMI count, or uh, what is the uh, the count for specific genes, and uh, so um, or or which cluster does it belong to? Um, I don't know if I if. But let's say if we have a list of different expressed express genes, can we put uh, can we add those? Yeah, yeah. So, so, but then to get that list, uh, we have to get that list first, yes. which we can actually, I'll show you how, how to. So, so, f but, uh, so that is, uh, so in, if initially if you don't have a list of genes and if you want to get that list, uh, then we would use the differential expression analysis part of the pipeline. So for differential analysis, uh, we have to specify, uh, so, um, in Cell Ranger, when you want to differential, do differential expression analysis, basically you are saying compare uh, the uh, cells in one cluster against all other clusters, right? So you have to specify which of those uh, clustering results you want to use. So we had, uh, if you remember, we had uh, nine of them uh, here. So, so if you want, so and then as a result, we're going to basically get Say if you use uh, this clustering, you will get everything, all the genes that were differentially expressed in this cluster versus this cluster. And then everything that was differentially expressed in this cluster versus that one. So we'll get two sets of differentially expressed genes if you used k-means two. If you use k-means five, we're gonna get five sets of differentially expressed genes, each corresponding to one of these clusters. So here I would, choose which one I, I want to use, so some something between 2 and 10. Um, let's use 5. And you can choose whether you want uh, the output only to have the significant genes or all the 32,000 genes. If you, uh, This is uh, sort of to give you a short list of, of genes, or if you want to get all the genes, uh, so right now I'll just get the short list of genes. I'll show you what happens if we get all the genes. Uh, we can short list them later um, if you want. And, and then uh, we can specify which columns do we want to have export to be exported per gene. So one of the columns is going to be whether it's significant or not. Basically significance condition, uh, the raw p-value, adjusted p-value, uh, uh, the log twofold change, uh, the order ordering uh, based on whether it, how how significant was it among the other genes, and a whole lot of other uh, sort of columns. So this is summing them in the cluster compared to the sum of the counts in the other clusters. Um, just just so that we get a smaller table right now, I'm just going to so deselect and just keep uh, whether they are significant or not. And maybe the log twofold change as well. And um, so this basically gonna give me a significance condition for each cluster. So it's gonna say in cluster one, this gene was significant or not. 
and then in cluster two whether it was significant or not in cluster. So I'm going to get five since I have chosen five as a clustering k means I'm going to I'm going to get five columns, each specifying the significance for one of the clusters. I'm going to get also five columns for the log twofold change within each of those clusters. So um, I can also do a plot heat map plot of uh, and then say okay plot the not the three uh, um, most significant uh, genes per each of those five clusters in the heat map and then just specify parameters for uh, for the other plots generally I think um, this is not that important if you later going to be using the interactive plot to to do you know, um, to fine tune your your plot, but um, but the options is there in case you wanted to sort of have have them in in your report. So I would I would run this, and it will uh, this time you will notice that it will go through um, um, computing the differential expression. Um, for each of the clusters. So, by the way, this is a, the cell range, probably one um, um, benefit of the cell range app is also, since a lot of the results are pre-computed, not the differential expression analysis, but the clustering results, it's, it's the fastest among those three apps that we have seen. So on average, like the Surat gonna take a matter of minutes, Monocle may take up to hours, if, if depending on the type of analysis you choose. So maybe for the for for those apps, maybe we will do some screen recording rather than doing live demo. It won't be as easy to do a live demo for them. Uh, so so now this time, since we did a differential expression analysis, if I go back and look at the, um, the output, so this is the new output at 16.00, zero, zero. yeah, that's the time. So now I'm, I'm getting another table called differential expression analysis, dAnalysis.txt. So if I open that table, uh, so this is so I could, I could choose to overwrite the existing analysis, but since I have chosen to create a new directory, I should make sure that I go and open the results of, of that, um, the new analysis. So, so if you notice, now I have a C1 significance, basically the significance for cluster one, and then log, log, log twofold change for cluster one, and then C2 significance, and C2, log uh, twofold change and C3 significance all the way to C5. So, so I have one significance column per uh, cluster and, uh, and now if, if, if you want to take a look at them, you can use the table view, grab it here. And uh, so, so these are basically the significant genes that we got. If I had chosen to include all the genes uh, here in the cell ranger, so not just the significant ones, um, so if I had unchecked this, I would get the list of all the 32,000 genes. And then I could then uh, use, there's this column significant in any, which basically says whether that gene was significant in any of the clusters. So if we see here, it's all true. and it would be false for all the remaining of the genes. So right now it's 90 genes. So now, I'm not sure if, if you have recently uh, noticed in some of the publications, there's a, uh, so the conventional way to do, so now we want to see uh, whether there's any intersection between the cells that are uh, expressed in, in one clusters versus the other ones. And the conventional way was, was a Venn diagram. And there's a Venn diagram app still uh, in Vizar, but I'm going to use a different uh, type of plot uh, that's becoming more popular and actually um, it was initially also published in Nature 
uh, methods, and it's becoming sort of a more popular way of visualizing the sets. So it's called Opset. And it has an interactive uh, online version as well, uh, and as well as an R version. So we have this uh, app made for it. So basically, I'm assigning the data to it. I only have to specify what are my columns, which it's going to use for the cell intersection. And if you remember, we had these uh, significance columns. Basically, it says if a gene was significant in one, uh, in, this, in, uh, in this cluster or not. So I'm just going to select those columns uh, for cluster 1, cluster 2, cluster 3, cluster 4, cluster 5. And let's just run it without specifying any other options. So now, uh, what this basically shows, uh, well, actually, let's change some of the options so that it, it actually looks, uh, the f the, so let's uh, set the plot labels to be a bit larger. I'm going to just increase all of them uh, a little bit. So you can individually uh, change the plots. Um, Okay, just, let's just run it again, just so that it's uh, easier to see. So, um, so what it basically shows is that, um, so first of all, these are um, our different clusters. So you can see that cluster one had the most number of uh, significant genes, around 40 something. Cluster two is the next one, cluster five is the third, cluster three is the other one, and then cluster four has the fewer no, fewest number of them, right? And now here it shows all the possible intersections. So it shows I have 41. Okay, I have 41 uh, here. Um, there are cluster 2, 38 of them. There are five genes that are both in cluster 1 and cluster 5. Uh, four genes in cluster 3. And uh, one gene in cluster 5. And there's one gene that's all both in cluster 4 and cluster 1. And it basically it shows all the possible intersection in a much better way than a Venn diagram would show you. Um, and uh, I, th um, I, I, I recommend you using this or tr giving it a try over the Venn diagram. So now, if you want to get those genes, say if you want to see, okay, what are those genes that are in cluster 5 and 1, um, that's when you can use the the... Uh, uh, Vizar's uh, table view app. So if I just bring this table view app down here and drag the data. So if I'm interested in everything that's, uh, maybe I run this again with a little bit smaller font size so that it fits over. Okay, so if I'm interested in uh, these guys, these five genes, which are cl in cluster one and cluster five, I can come here and say, okay, I'm interested in the ones that are significant in cluster one, and also significant in uh, cluster five. And uh, I get those five genes, basically. So this sort of um, coincidentally kind of um, at least visually, they, they two sort of go well together. So if, if you have your um, offset uh, output, you can use it as a global view to your data and then sort of pick the specifics uh, uh, using the table view app. And then once you have this, you can save this result if, if you want. And um, I don't know, cluster one and cluster five, I don't I name it. And then export it. Uh, if uh, to uh, a data table if later you wanted to, you know, also keep that in your analysis directory, cluster 5. So basically this list. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to cover um, today. Uh, most of what I uh, what I showed basically today, it's also on the slides, just for your for you to revisit. Uh, so um, we had uh, maybe I'll go through them quickly just to refresh. So we can uh, once we get the results, we can use the scatter plot, 
um, to sort of do interactive analysis, to do gating, or uh, to get aggregated results. We can use the, um, the parallel coordinates uh, to analyze specific genes of interest. And uh, this is the differential expression analysis table. Uh, we disabled a lot of them. I just didn't want it to have a large table to look at. But um, um, th we got the offset results and sort of looked at, uh, and looked at how to um, uh, filter uh, our gene list uh, based on uh, the significance. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. If, if, are there any questions? And, uh, and, uh, uh, parallel curve, curvature? Uh, yeah, parallel yeah. coordinates, yeah. So is the, is the color, like the, the range? Right. Okay. Like the colored line is the, is the mean, right? Uh, so ba you can it's actually... The standard deviation, right? The color. So. Uh, yes. It depends on what you select. You can select it to be mean, or you can select it to be your median, or you can... So that's, there's an option within the parallel coordinates here. So you can actually say, I want it to be median and quartiles, uh, mean, mean only, uh, mean max range, basically just to extend, just to make sure that, okay, I don't have anything uh, sort of washed out when I, when I do the aggregate. Uh, so, so it depends on what you select. And this is sort of, if you remember, uh, the, the, your uh, uh, bar plots, uh, sorry, box plots, or, your, or the violent plots sort of show this, this median plus minus uh, your quartiles, right? Uh, so this can, some, this can uh, be used. I, I think, let's see if you can use the violent plots to sh uh, to get uh, the similar kind of a, but so we want to uh, group them by uh, cluster uh, by k-means, and then we want we say okay we want the viol violin plot for these uh, genes, and let's run it. Um, I didn't try it, but sort of this is the violin plot that sort of. Um, corresponds to this parallel coordinate plot. Um, I think it has its uses, but uh, when you are comparing, I think this parallel coordinate sort of it gives you a little bit of a more concise and easy way. And then you can uh, change your um, color maps uh, to sort of for them to match if you wanted to. Um, so. <coughs> um, I guess. Uh, yeah, is there any other questions? If you do, um, if you want to do differential expression between just one population versus another, you would just uh, select that in the plot. So, so uh, we don't have that actually, but um, but it's something that we can add. Like if we want to do. Um, sort of selection based differential. Because differential expression analysis part of the cell ranger is done uh, in real time. Like it's not pre-processed. So we can do any sort of, we can do the differential expression analysis of the selected cells afterwards, yeah. But uh, it's not there yet, but it's probably something we can easily add, yeah. Uh, so so uh, one thing probably for those of you who may have not seen uh, the um, uh, the uh, Vizar, we have not used Vizar in the past. Um, sort of the idea behind Vizar is also to have this sort of app store for you to have your own apps. Uh, so um, each of these apps that you see here, basically the R code for it is, is, is open source. It's out there. So you can go and modify it. In fact, actually we can, you can even modify the R code for it within VizR. So this is sort of the R code that, but if, if you wanted to have sort of your own set of apps for your own lab, for your own group, you can uh, easily create that, create a repository, say in GitHub, if you are, that, like, if you can develop or you have someone who can develop apps. And then uh, basically you can, you can 
get uh, have the URL for for that repository. That's basically your own app store, and and then have the apps uh, downloaded from that repository. So right now this is the master repository for the apps that I'm developing, but um, in case you know you can you can sort of customize it for for to create your own app or or pick if you wanted to pick one of the apps and then add new features to it if you know R. Uh, that's completely like out there. It's possible. So even for people who who know uh, R, I hope. It has. It gives you some some additional value. Um, so if I change the code here, will it change the code of everything, or only the one I? Downloaded? And so right now, it's only the one that you have downloaded. Yeah. Uh, but if if for example, for example, Bernie is helping out right now with the other apps. So what what uh, Bernie has done is is uh, that the repository for for the apps are is public. So he cr have created a fork of that repository, and uh, Bernie makes changes. And once basically thinks he's done, sends me back those changes through in Git. There's this thing called pull requests where you basically say uh, these are the changes, integrate them back, and I integrate them back into this repository. And every time that there is. Uh, so, so we have to just create, the, c click this, and then basically this is sort of the refresh button. This refresh does it locally. This refresh does it, gets it from the repo. So you don't have uh, to download unless if there was also a change to the um, uh, to the framework because the framework is also uh, once in a while we add new features to it. So in which case then you have to also download, uh, re-download. Um, but but if if you make changes uh, here locally, um, so um, I don't know uh, if I if there is anything that I can t right now touch without um, uh, I don't know here for example the title I, if if I change this to a title of uh, a test title. And just run this uh, this test title. Uh, this is right now only change. So until actually I save this, it's not even. Sa so if I if I, it won't even overwrite my uh, local files. But if if you now save this in violent prod, now you have your saved version, like your modified version. But um, this is sort of for quick changes. But usually, if you want to make more significant changes, it's just better to open it in in R Studio, and this is basically the app, the entire code for the Cell Ranger app in R Studio. That's where usually uh, we make changes. We develop apps. So, do you uh, want to do one? Uh, basically, we're working on a few other apps, Serat and Monocle, right now, among among others. Um, and we're just polishing those up, but we'll do yeah, um, uh, a couple more sessions like this to demo those. Uh, they're a little bit more involved, but I don't know, do you have stuff prepared to? I think the Serat app is, uh, that, that Bernie uh, developed is, is ready, but mm -hmm. I think it's better to keep it for the next session. Um, I can talk about both in the next session. If you wanted to play around with them, uh, I mean they are there. Like uh, you, as I said, like in the, uh, they they follow the same uh, principle uh, where uh, you um, uh, drag the app into the workspace. Sorat, you specify. So for example, Sorat allows. So the Cell Ranger. App only allows uh, the 10x uh, uh, pipeline uh, output as an in sort of uh, as the input to the app, but for Sorat there's there's uh, like two options. In Monocle, you can also if you have a, a read uh, you have your counts in a in a textual format. Like if you have a data table, Monocle allows you to also specify that. But here. If you specify, basically it's the same idea. You specify where the data is, and but I won't go through the analysis. As you can see, there's more analysis steps involved. 
an output directory, and uh, again, uh, so this one probably I should call it just output, I don't know, Surat. And then there's the different analysis steps that you can specify, but I won't go through them. Uh, no. But if you want to play with them in the meanwhile, I mean, feel free. Do you want to show people again where they can download? Sure. Uh, so. <coughs> And then, yeah, if anybody plays with it and has any feedback, uh, we're still yeah. polishing all the stuff, so uh, yeah. I'll leave I, it all. Like, you don't see any like, problems, like bugs, or like, if you want to add any new features. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, so yeah, actually, uh, yeah, this is probably should have shown this. Uh, so if, if, you, if you see, like, bugs or, like, feature requests, it, it's fairly quick to report them. So help report bug uh, or software feature, basically, you only have to specify the title and description and whether it's a bug report or a feature request. And the rest are optional. But, but for example, if you wanted to attach a screenshot, you can attach a screenshot. And then if you wanted to put your email just in case you wanted to be like, uh, we can email you back when that bug was fixed. You can also put, but that's optional. Like basically, even if you just wanted to write a title and a description of your requests or bug reports, it's fairly quick. So you don't have to do any registration or anything. Um, it's, you can quickly just report them uh, from within the tool. Um, uh, as the link, as uh, you, you mentioned this, uh, it's in the slides maybe, maybe you can, uh, forward the uh, link to the slides after the um, mm -hmm. after the session. So, um, so previously it was called VizRseq uh, because it was just for the sequencing data. Recently, uh, uh, I've renamed it to be VizR. So the new website, the old website is still active, but the new website is VizR Software that GitHub that I O. And then within that, there's the download section. So. Um, the latest version that uh, I uploaded today, it's here. Uh, and then there's this, these are the older versions. Um, older versions is sometimes good if, if, for example, something breaks into in the new version and uh, you want to quickly revert back to the old version to be able to redo your analysis. But generally, we try to only put the stable versions here. So it's better to just download the latest version. Well, we'll stick around uh, for if anybody wants to discuss anything related for a while. We have the room, but otherwise, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.